Thank you, Senator Taylor. As always, you were rousing. Um, thank you so much for those remarks. Um, I also want to, before I begin, give some special thanks to some folks. Um, even though she is absent right now, she's still working for Senator Taylor right, right. now. So that's why she's not here. We have 100 bills <laughs> that will be in session. So Michelle Bryant is extremely that's supportive. Crazy. My chief of staff is not here. So she sends her regards. Yes. So a special thank you to Michelle in her absence. Uh, she is one of my dearest friends, and she helped put a lot of this together for us. Um, another person in the audience is none other than our DNC member, one of them, Miss Martha Love. Wave, Martha. <laughs> Martha has been a mentor to me for a very, very long time. She is. No stranger to telling you what you should and should not do. And uh, she knows how to pull a coattail or two, if you know what I'm saying. Okay? Um, I would also like to acknowledge our fourth CD chair, Terrell Martin. Raise your hand, Terrell. And even though they are not here, I would also like to acknowledge, because I would not be here without them, my parents, Johnny and Gertha Myers. Uh, so, while they are not here, they will be watching online, so they are here with me. Um, and thank you to all of you that decided to take the invitation and come out and say, I'm going to go and support her. A lot of times, you, I may say, show up at this place, and I'm surprised. My friends can tell you. I tell them to show up somewhere. They're like, I don't know what we're doing. She just said show up. So here we are. <laughs> we're doing something. I don't know what's going on, so they come. So I thank you, a very special thank you to all of you, my family, friends, and guests uh, for coming out, and good evening to you all. I am Dr. Keisha Myers, and I'm officially announcing my candidacy for the Wisconsin State Assembly District 12. <laughs> While I am thankful that you all received this invitation and came out uh, willingly to show your support, I want you to understand why I am running for office. The simplest answer is because of Scott Walker and the song on the radio reminded me of home. Let me explain. I have been known to be somewhat of an unofficial ambassador from Milwaukee. No matter where I go or have lived, I bask in the fact that Milwaukee is my home. So when I worked in Washington, D.C., I would often meet people, and of course, the first thing they ask you is, oh, where are you from? So I would say, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I would be met with a look of perplex, and the next question would be, I didn't know they had black people in Milwaukee. <laughs> and what is it like? So, of course, I look at them and say, well, I am black. If you're not know And I was born in Wisconsin, so yes, we do exist. And I would go on to tell them about my experiences growing up in Milwaukee. Things like, of course, playing outside, actually having a yard to play in. People in DC really don't have yards, it's a thing. Um, going to mini golf at Johnson's Park, uh -huh. the big dinosaur. Yeah. And of course, all of the wonderful memories that I had going to the best school anywhere, Rufus King High School. Woo! Yeah. But, that changed in 2011 when Act 10 was passed. I happened to be at work and a fellow coworker said, hey Myers, what's going on in your hometown? I watched on TV as my fellow teachers marched on the state capitol to voice their outrage over having their union rights stripped away. And then I watched as Senator Taylor and 13 other senators exhibited a moral aptitude for justice and left the state to, fade, to force negotiations on behalf of the people. That was the first time I had the urge to come back home. Later that summer, I came home for a visit and was watching Channel 12, only to see a blistering headline that said, MPS to lay off 519. Only to learn that that mass layoff, which was the largest one in MPS history, was due to Scott Walker cutting MPS's budget by $84 million. After talking to a lot of students and teachers, I now know that that cut and the subsequent ones that have happened since then were not only just those 519 jobs that were lost, but that turned into science labs, 
art classes, music lessons, physical education classes, and field trips. All of which were things that I had growing up and took advantage of being a student in MPS. And this is also some of the things that made my academic experience one of the best ones that I can remember. But again, I looked at the TV and said, mm, I guess if I was at home, maybe I could help change this. Fast forward to 2014. While listening to NPR, I learned, according to the Annie E. Casey Foundation, Wisconsin was deemed the, quote, worst state for black and Hispanic children. I literally almost had a car accident listening to that. What? Not Wisconsin. My Wisconsin, I thought. The same Wisconsin that raised me, molded me, and made me who I am. The same Wisconsin that had offered my parents and many others like them economic freedom and an escape from the Jim Crow era South. Couldn't be my Wisconsin, but sadly, yes, my Wisconsin. It was at that time that I looked at my surroundings and I realized I had done what a lot of my classmates did. We grew up and took our talents outside of Wisconsin. We loved Wisconsin, but we left Wisconsin. And we left Wisconsin in the hands of people who were creating policies that are taking us backward. So perplexed and equally annoyed, I decided to change the radio station to an R&B station. And it just so happened to be that Stephanie Mills was on the radio singing, When I think of home. <laughs> okay, Lord, you ain't got to tell me too many more times what I need to do. I guess I need to move back home. So I decided right then and there, I called my mom. I said, guess what? She said, what? I said, I'm moving back home. She said, you don't have a job. Like, where are you going to live? Like, have you answered any of these questions? I said, well, your house is always open. So I guess I'll be going there, so just be prepared. And luckily, she let me come back home. So that summer, I moved back home. I began working in the Department of Corrections as an education director, and I'm now working for Milwaukee Public Schools, the same school district my parents worked for, and the same one that I graduated from. MPS Proud. MPS Proud, indeed. So from those vastly different vantage points, I began to see just how deep the Republicans had gotten with their policies. It's deep, y'all. Um, you know, their policies are doing so much to create low morale, mistrust, and further economic uncertainty. Whether it was the correctional officer who was concerned because they were forced to work so much overtime, they had no time to rest or spend with their families or the family of the incarcerated person who was so concerned about the probability of their loved ones being able to find employment once they were released. Today I work with teachers who continuously have more and more added to their other duties as assigned list. Amen. So work every day making on average $15,000 less than their counterparts in neighboring Minnesota. Sometimes teaching up to 40 students in a class. In District 12, we have also seen a sharp decline in quality of life amenities that make neighborhoods thrive. Things like sit-down restaurants, retail, and entertainment spaces. Anybody ever remember Norbridge Mall? <laughs> okay. It is a sad reality for many people that live in the 12th that they must go outside the community to go to a movie or go shopping. Meanwhile, neighboring communities reap the benefits of our hard-earned money and tax base. I don't know about you, but I think something is very wrong with that. Some people may say, well, what about the other guy? He's been there. You too young. I'll tell you exactly right. You are surely right. He has been there. And in the words of Dr. Phil, how's that working out for you? <laughs> the current representative was first elected to the assembly in 1960. I'll repeat that for you. <laughs> to put it in perspective, my mother was 10 years old in 1960. And that's when he first got elected to the Assembly. 1960. Don't know about you. World looks a lot different from 1960 than 2018. I believe we are overdue for a fresh perspective and a new outlook. Yes. Don't you think? Yes. <laughs> Senator Taylor has a saying, if you're not at the table, you must be on the menu. So look around at our city and our state. 
Our representation must mirror our population. We desperately need something new. My parents taught me that there is no cause in complaining if your complaint is not followed up with action. So today I am choosing to act. Just so that you know, I am not acting alone. Now, many of you know in this room, I was raised in the Baptist church. And Ecclesiastes 10 and 19 teaches us that a feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry, but money answereth all things. So I just want to point out to you that we have offered for you tonight a bit of a feast. You can step right to the back to the bar and get your wine. But I don't want you to leave until you stop to see one of the ushers at the door and leave your offer. But in all seriousness, I'm tired of seeing Milwaukee get suffocated in the state legislature. I'm tired of soliciting corporations to raise money to fund programs for my students for things that are included in regular academic programs in suburban schools. I'm tired of having to deal with layoffs based on educational funding inequity. I'm tired of having to justify my worth as an educator to people in Madison who've never taught a class. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of having friends and neighbors worry about the high cost of their health care premiums. I'm tired of people who want to work not having greater access to employment. If you are sick of complacent, run-of-the-mill political game playing as I am, I need you to help me get elected so we can get to work. Wallow in your disgust. Put your disgust to work. Join the fight with me. Help us knock on doors. Register folks to vote. Educate your family members on the issues. Let's work together to do all that we can. And remember, together we can do better to change the narrative so we all can be proud and call Milwaukee home. Thank you so much.